Hey, Dr. Amy here. In this video, I'm showing you the exact foods to avoid if you have hormone positive breast cancer. And more importantly, what foods to eat instead. After being diagnosed with cancer, it is common to be concerned about the foods you eat. If you're doing research on this, that's really smart because your food has a big impact. The issue is, is that there is a lot of conflicting information out there. So let me give you a clear path on exactly what to eat and what to avoid. Let's start with what to eat, and at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you the exact foods to avoid. Here are three foods to make sure you eat if you have hormone-positive breast cancer. The first is berries. You are in desperate need of antioxidants. After a cancer diagnosis and cancer treatment, your antioxidant levels are going to be depleted. This happens, we know that this is the case. But once we understand that this is happening, then we need to address it. Berries are an amazing source of antioxidants. Raspberries, blackberries, blueberries. You can eat them fresh, or you could also get frozen varieties if you find it hard to get fresh produce where you live. Now, antioxidants are a controversial topic when it comes to cancer. Here's why. We have science-backed literature to show that antioxidant supplements are not safe during cancer treatment. So during treatments like chemotherapy or radiation, you do not want to take an antioxidant supplement. A study published in 2019 showed that women who were undergoing breast cancer treatment actually had higher rates of cancer recurrence or death if they were taking antioxidant supplements during their cancer treatment. They actually had worse outcomes. This is scary, but this study actually shows that you will have worse outcomes if you take an antioxidant supplement during your chemotherapy or radiation versus if you hadn't taken it at all. The women in this study were taking antioxidant supplements like vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin E, coenzyme Q10. If women were just taking a multivitamin, which happened to have a small dose of vitamin C, let's say, in that multivitamin, then they were at no increased risk. The multivitamins were safe. But this is truly why antioxidant supplements are not recommended during your cancer treatment. Now, if you're on a long-term oral cancer treatment, like a pill you take by mouth, then it's best to get this checked by your own team. They'll be able to do a full assessment and make sure it's safe for you. But it's important to remember that supplements and food are different. It is safe to get antioxidants through your food. Even during cancer treatment, that's safe because the dose is so much lower than what you would get through an antioxidant supplement. Let me give you an example. If you were to receive a vitamin C infusion, like through IV, you would be getting the same amount of vitamin C that is in 50 oranges. 50 oranges, that's a lot. You would never sit down and eat 50 oranges. And that's the difference, it's the dose. So go ahead, dig in and eat berries. Boosting your antioxidant levels back up is critical to not only prevent the common cough, cold, or flu, but it's also gonna lower your risk of a cancer recurrence. Okay, but the next food that you absolutely need to be eating if you have hormone-positive breast cancer is lean protein. Here's why this is so important, specifically for hormone-positive cancer. Part of your treatment will be to suppress your estrogen levels. This is typically done with drugs like tamoxifen, anastrozole, letrozole, or exemestane. These medications put your body into artificial menopause. This is severe. It's happening before natural menopause or in addition to natural menopause. And the side effects are more intense. The problem with this is that your estrogen levels they're gonna drop dramatically. And this is gonna impact your body overall. It makes it more difficult to create or maintain lean muscle mass on your body with less estrogen. With less muscle mass, comes problems with your metabolism. It's going to slow down, which means you're gonna put on weight. It's also dangerous to have less lean muscle mass over time. It's lean muscle mass that's gonna keep you strong, lean, and fit as you age. So here's what you do to prevent the loss of lean muscle mass and keep yourself strong. You eat more protein. Start by including 30 grams of protein at every meal, 
breakfast, lunch, and supper. These are foods like egg whites, chicken thighs, cottage cheese, black beans, or nutritional yeast. The unfortunate part is that we are not eating enough protein. Our society wants everything done fast, and that is carbohydrates. But after cancer, we need to be more strategic about your protein. Okay, and the third food that you need to be eating after hormone-positive breast cancer are cruciferous vegetables. These are vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, or Brussels sprouts. We know that eating plant-forward will lower your risk of cancer. Including more plants in your diet, this is what's gonna help you stay cancer-free. Here's why. It's fiber. We're just not eating enough fiber in our diets. And the simplest way to get more fiber is to eat more cruciferous vegetables. Now tonight, when you dish up your plate for supper, I want you to make sure that half of that plate is vegetables. That's a lot. You need more vegetables than you think. Okay, so those are the three foods to eat after you're diagnosed with hormone-positive breast cancer. But what about the foods to avoid? Here are three foods to stop eating or to avoid after hormone-positive breast cancer. Number one is full-fat dairy. This might be shocking to you, but we're starting to see more and more science showing that full-fat dairy increases the risk of breast cancer or breast cancer recurrence. Studies have shown that breast cancer survivors who ate full-fat dairy, well, they were at a higher risk of death after their breast cancer diagnosis. Now, some people will say it's because of the hormones in the milk or the dairy. Cattle are given hormones to supply more milk milk, and those hormones when ingested potentially increase the risk of breast cancer or breast cancer recurrence. But the same association was not seen in breast cancer survivors who ate low-fat dairy. Then a new theory emerged. It's known that women who are at an unhealthy or overweight body weight, well, they are at a higher risk of breast cancer recurrence. So if you're carrying around extra weight, then this could be increasing your risk of cancer. Full-fat dairy has many more calories than low-fat dairy, so eating full fat could actually increase your calories and increase your body weight, therefore increasing your risk of cancer. To help control calories and reduce the risk of recurrence, I would switch to low fat alternatives. The second food to avoid is processed meats. We know that processed meats will increase the risk of cancer or a cancer recurrence, especially in hormone positive breast cancer. Now, there's been a pretty clear link between processed meats and developing cancer. The scientific evidence is from large epidemiological studies. This looks at a large group of people and shows that the people that ate processed meat were more likely to develop cancer. And more specifically, it's been shown to increase the risk of breast cancer. But what exactly is considered processed meat? Processed meat is a meat that's been altered due to salting or curing or fermenting. Even the smoking process would be considered a processed meat. Something's been done to the meat to alter the taste, the look, the flavor, or something's been done to prolong its shelf life. An example would be like hot dogs or sausage or bacon or deli meat. Now the majority of the most recent literature looks at red processed meat, so beef or pork. But less research looks at white meat, fish and poultry. So at the moment, it's generally thought that white meat, fish and poultry, even if processed, that would be a safer option compared to red processed meats. But honestly, we just don't know yet. So if you really want it to be safe, and do everything you can to prevent a cancer recurrence, you would avoid all processed meats. Okay, but what about nitrate-free meat? Can you still eat processed meat as long as it's nitrate free? Nitrates are natural chemicals. They're used as a food additive. It works by stopping the growth of bacteria and enhancing the flavor. Nitrates are often added to deli meat, ham, or sausage. They prevent bacteria from growing and prolong the shelf life. But it's not quite clear if the increased risk of cancer associated with processed meats is due to the nitrates or not. We also know that foods that are labeled nitrate free, they still contain nitrates. Nitrates occur naturally in our environment and in our foods. For example, foods that often say they're nitrate free still contain salary juice or salary powder, which contain nitrates. So basically we don't understand exactly why processed meats increase the risk of cancer but we do know it increases the risk of breast cancer and breast cancer recurrence. Could be due to nitrates, but it could be due to something else. We just don't know yet. So if you really love processed meats, you might be wondering, is it safe to eat any? I mean, is there a certain amount that might be worth the risk? Fortunately, there's a study to answer this exact question. Now, obviously the risk of cancer depends on the amount of processed meats you eat. It's estimated that if you were to eat 50 grams of 
processed meat every single day. And 50 grams is a pretty small amount. You would be increasing your risk of cancer by 18%. As a cancer survivor myself, that feels pretty high. I don't want something to increase my risk of cancer by nearly 20%. No way, I wanna lower my risk of cancer so I limit the amount of processed meats I eat. But that's an important distinction to remember. You don't have to go all or nothing. You can still enjoy processed meats once in a while. That will still keep your cancer risk really low. Okay, and the last food that you absolutely want to avoid in hormone positive breast cancer are sugary drinks. Now this would include soft drinks and soda pop, but it also includes sugary coffee drinks, like from Starbucks. They can be loaded with sugar, which has no nutritional value. Plus, that sugar can contribute to weight gain, which increases your risk of cancer recurrence. Now, you may have noticed that I did not include soy on my list of food to avoid after hormone-positive breast cancer. Not including soy in this video may have been a mistake, but not in the way you think. We know that soy actually lowers the risk of hormone-positive breast cancer recurrence. After years of misinformation about soy increasing the risk of cancer, it's been disproven. We now have science to show that soy is actually protective against breast cancer, even in hormone-positive breast cancer. When we look at cultures that eat high amounts of soy, for example, Asian cultures, we see that the more soy they eat, the lower their risk of cancer. It's actually protective. There is no limit to how much soy you can eat. Okay, so now that you know what foods to eat and what foods to avoid in hormone-positive breast cancer, the next thing that you need to know is how to stop breast cancer cells naturally. There are things that can be done at home right now to help keep you cancer-free. That's exactly why I'm linking up this next video here. Click the link here, I'll see you in the next video.